which we are. So we'll give it a couple of minutes, wait for people to join. There we go, we're live. Cool. Phone to charge. Let's wait for people to join. Yeah, just mute your speakers and um, or nice people coming on. Are you still on? On holiday, or are you back to to treating now? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm treating even though I'm supposed to be on holiday. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay, let's um. Hey everyone, that's joining. Hey Riley, hey Jordan, hey Pete, hey Steve. Thanks for joining. We'll give it a couple of minutes, Alan. Right, we'll let some people join, and, and then we'll and then we'll kick off. And um... oh, hey Dave, Dave Stephen says hello. Oh, hi Dave. How are things, um, has COVID impacted um, the availability of herbs at all, Anand, or is it still? Not, not for me, no. Okay. Not any problems. Hey Jordan. Hi Charlie as well. Hey Charlie. Are you, are you, where are you, um, Doing, you're doing that. You've got the Harrow Clinic and Wood Green and Wood Green. Yeah. You're still there. Yeah, just those two. Oh, Enough. don't want to open a third. No. Sorry, you don't want to open a third. Oh God, Lord, no, no. <laughs> I'm getting too old, Mish. <laughs> you need to get an apprentice, mate. Gee, God. Um, uh, two's enough. That and the teaching. That's enough. Yeah. All right, so let's just, it's five past seven, we'll just kick off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, welcome everyone. So a little bit of a change today. Normally we have traditional martial artists uh, that we're talking to, but today we thought it'd be great to talk to Anand Marshall around Japanese acupuncture, also known as, as Kampo, uh, as well as Japanese and classical Chinese herbs. Uh, Anand's been doing this for well over 20 years. Um, he has a... A clinic in Wood Green, which is very close to myself and to to Alex. Uh, I've known Anand for a, a long time. Uh, we met actually. He was doing doing uh, classes with Alex in in Southern Praying Mantis, and he is my go-to person apart from Steve Paul. But with Anand being in Wood Green, it's literally a ten-minute drive for me. He's my go-to person to say, "Oh, can you fix my my neck? Can you help my my back? Any injuries? Generally, if I need it done." Uh, I go and see Anand, and he's a person that I recommend highly uh, to a lot of my friends and family. Uh, with that, Anand, welcome. Thank you for, Thank for you. taking the time uh, to, to talk to, to myself and Alex, as well as to the, the, the Kung Fu group. Really, really happy to Pleasure. have you. Pleasure. Yeah, nice one. Welcome, Anand. Thanks, Alex. So, Anand, tell us a little bit about you. How and why did you go into this field? 
Right. Uh, I think I went in by accident, to be honest. Uh, I went in as a patient, first of all. Uh, I, was, uh, I had an injury and I'd already seen, uh, uh, I'd been seen in the NHS. I injured my left shoulder in do, doing martial arts and um, didn't get much sympathy from my GP or the physios. It sort of self inflicted and told me to get on with it. Uh, I then saw uh, a private physiotherapist, but he couldn't help. And I finally saw um, an osteopath who was also an Olympic team physiotherapist. Um, and after, I think I saw him for about three months. Um, and he said to me, every time he set my shoulder, everything's fine. And then it, it, it just didn't heal. It slipped out of place again and I was in a lot of pain. So he didn't know what to do with me uh, unless surgery. So he told me to go and see somebody that he knew of. Um, he, he was skeptical because she did Chinese acupuncture and herbs. But he said she got results when he didn't. Um, thing was, I was terrified of needles, um, and I was, I was skeptical as well. I just thought, how the sticky needles on me is going to help this shoulder? Yeah. So I went to see her. It's really odd. I think uh, the universe was having a laugh with me. And um, the interesting thing was she said um, she wouldn't treat my shoulder. That what she was going to treat was my stress, my night sweats, and my insomnia. Um, wow, interesting. Because there's a whole idea of treating underlying cause, not just symptoms. Um, I used to be a social worker in those days, and I worked in what was called, um, it was called child protection social work then. Uh, I think they call it safeguarding now. And it, it, it's an incredibly stressful job. Uh, right, it sounds it. Sounds like there's some yeah. stuff that can go on so, there that can be very stressful. Yeah. I think the job was making me sick, basically. Um, and I was probably not living a way I should have been living to cope with the stress of the job. So she gave me some herbs. Uh, they were the foulest things I ever tasted. My flatmates were furious with me. Was it a tea? Yeah, you get to boil it up. It's, it's the old raw stuff in, in that, that, that system. My flatmates hated me because uh, the stink. Uh, but um, I had the best night's sleep uh, of mm. the days. Really? Uh, yeah, my night sweat stopped. I stopped being so aggressive and irritable. Um, and then within, I'd say six weeks, my shoulder pain had almost gone. And she, wow. in her opinion, my shoulder had been overtreated. Everyone wow. grabbing it and bashing it and pulling it and tugging it wasn't, wasn't the pro was actually making my shoulder worse. Okay. So anyway, being a natural skeptic, I thought it was placebo. Um, so I saw a few other times for other things just to see whether it really would work or not. And she always but, delivered. Just out of interest, Anna, I mean, you, you, you'd been doing martial arts. Did you, were you still kind of apprehensive or did you not have any knowledge around sort of herbs? and? No, no there was no, nothing mentioned because, you know, it, it was kickboxing. Okay, right. See, there wasn't any of this kind of idea. It was just very, what we call external training and physical stuff. There was nothing else really. Right, okay. Not like a traditional martial arts mm -hmm. you have that kind of idea of uh chi key depending which which word you want to use so none of that was really there and then um yeah i saw a few other times and then finally i sent other people to see does it work on other people it only works on those who believe in her and they, they generally got better as well then i realized there must be something to this uh the only thing i hated the needles you know because she she was like hardcore Chinese style acupuncture, like very thick needles, whack them in, twiddle like man. Oh, knitting needles, yeah? Yeah, oh my lord. And in those days, they were used, new, needles were reusable. So, oh. you, so you autoclave them. Oh. Yeah. So they were thick and they get blunt. So you, you really, you felt them. You know, I don't yeah. care what anyone says, you felt them. Um, yeah. So yeah. And then, after that, I decided, I spoke to her about me training in it, and she said, look, you've got transferable skills from being, if you worked in social work, you can work with people. And our job is about working with people. Listening to people is such an important part of the job. Uh, so, yeah, and then, yeah. Um, so, I qualified in 1998 as a Chinese acupuncturist first. Um, I then went on to study uh, Kampo, which is Japanese herbal medicine. Uh, and the reason I studied it, because I was interested in the Chinese theory called the Shan Han Lun. 
and nobody was around teaching it at that time. Yeah. But Campo is based on the Shan Handun. So I really want, I didn't want the herbs. I just wanted to learn that theory. So did I, I made a, I made a mistake. So is, is Campo just the herbs or is that the... Yeah, it's just the herbs, no. Okay, so, so Campo is the... the herbal herbal practice. Japanese herbal practice. Japanese yeah. herbal practice. Okay, my mistake, sorry. So yeah. I became a Japanese herbalist. Um, and then the problem was when I qualified, I suddenly found my... Um, my herbal practice didn't interface with my Chinese acupuncture. Right. Looking back, it can be done. But at the time I was newly qualified, a couple of years, I couldn't make it fit. My herbal teacher didn't practice Chinese acupuncture. She couldn't help me. She didn't know, understand Chinese TCM thinking. So fortunately enough, there was a Japanese acupuncturist teaching at the time called uh, uh, Dr. Steve Birch. And he's a phenomenal practitioner. And I, I went and studied with him and uh, I discovered Japanese acupuncture and that's the system which I pretty much use today, which right. is a lineage system called Manaka. Manaka is a system of Japanese acupuncture right. that I use. Oh, Manaka. I just yeah. want to, I want to go back though. Did your shoulder get healed? <laughs> yeah. In, in yeah. Like, literally, I think four to six sessions. Wow. You know, uh, where I've been having treatments from, you know, one of the last guys was Olympic team physio. Uh, who's also an osteopath, and he's the one told me to go and see her. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it worked. And so, do you think? Um, do you think back then, looking at the way that your shoulder was treated, do you think it was a matter of they were treat they were treating a a symptom? Yes, of course. Yeah, they they, they were looking at me as a conventional medical would practitioner would do anyway. They're just yeah. looking at biomechanics. Right. And they see yeah. as a series of pulleys. And see where's the tension in the pulley. Yeah, right. so looking at it as a, an injury to that yeah. part of the body yeah. rather than something yeah. else. That's and not connecting the there. mind to the body, not connecting digestion yeah. to the body, not connecting my night sweats to the body. But that would be a different area of medicine they'll look at. You know, that right. Mm. And so then when you went to see uh, uh, this acupuncturist and herbalist, yeah. she, was then, she was obviously saying, talking to you, yeah. and saying, okay, let me know. Do you have this? Do you have that? Do you have night yeah. sweats? very stressed yeah. so then yeah. she, was, she was looking at causes of yes. symptoms yeah. but, but the best way i was taught was that a good acupuncturist looks for patterns in chaos patterns so in chaos looks, yeah so it's, 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 it's something called chaos theory in physics yes yeah. so what you're trying to find is what connects all the dots and the chinese came up with patterns of diseases um and that's what we're searching for so You'll sometimes see an acupuncturist or a good herbalist. Um, they'll ask you like they'll ask you quite a lot of questions, and based on that, they will then work out what's the underlying thing that created these symptoms, or these mm. different symptoms. Because you can have you can have different symptoms, but you have the same cause. Interesting. So you 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 um you then started to train as you said you you first started training as a uh, Chinese acu acupuncturist. Yeah, TCM. Uh, yeah. TCM, and then yeah. Japanese uh, herbs. Herbalist, yeah. Uh, then I became a, a, a Japanese acupuncturist using then, of, of the, of the Manaka lineage. Okay. Uh, different lineages, like in martial arts, I suppose, systems or whatever. Right. And then I went on to study classical Chinese herbal medicine, right. which is based on the Shanghai and that kind of fitted a lot of the gaps that existed in my Japanese herbal system, to be honest. So yeah. I've gone right back to the source of of everything basically oh interesting so you so, mentioned the sha, uh, the shanghan lung yeah do you want to explain what that is okay Shanlun. Really? It, it's, it's one of the most revered uh systems of understanding diseases in china it's, it's compulsory reading for any doctor in china to learn us there's a number of classical books but that is the one for herbalists um, wow. It was written about a thousand two hundred years ago by a guy we call Doctor uh, Chong Qing, and when he was alive, he they, he came from quite a wealthy clan tribe. I'm not sure what you'd how you'd call it today. And there was a there was loads of wars on at that time in China when he was alive, and there was some pestilence went through as a result of the war. But although, because they're a wealthy group of people, they always did well because they had good food, they were resi safe, they could afford medicine, they had right. fairly comfortable jobs. But two thirds of these family were wiped out. So out of 300, 200 died. 
Wow. So he was extremely angry by this. And his culmination in his life's work was the Shanghan Lun. And in that book, he looked at why did the people die in the first place? And he said that there were two main causes. One was the doctors prescribing didn't understand about un uh, treating underlying cause right. and the symptoms. So patients died because of the tr treatment. The right. treatment made them worse. So th there's formulas that we use or, or principle we use where they call emptying formulas. They could be something that makes you sweat more, pee more or poop more. And that would be an empty. Now, if somebody's really weak and is already heavily sweating, to make them sweat further, to lose more body fluid, you can get them going to, you know, get, get them going to shock and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The organ shut down and you die. And that's why these people died, because those doctors didn't know the difference. And what he said was, the superior doctor knows the difference between yin and yang. And it's right. a, such a basic idea, but to this day, people still make that mistake. Right. So they gave the wrong form and they died. The other people did it were using um, spells and things. And he found those people actually didn't know what they were doing and their patients died. So mm. he, he created, it, all the herbal formulas used were not his formula. They were already around, but he put them in a, in a system, a way of how to use it. Wow. So, uh, the, those, those formulas are used to treat COVID at the moment in China. Incredible. Right? And, and effectively so. You know, they just, that's exactly what this book was written for. You know, the, the pestilence, sort of, so the pestilence that went through and wiped them out was a... Uh, we don't uh, know what it is. We're not mm. sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's some kind of respiratory problem. Respiratory. Yeah. Right. Uh, but the respiratory, there's also digestive problems, so people have diarrhea and, you know, mm. different three type symptoms. Echoes we, of today, though. Yeah, exactly. So all the formulas, if, you, if I go through the symptoms of, of um, that people might have with COVID, it fits his book. Nothing's changed in, eight, in 1800 years. Mm. What they pointed out back then was the certain symptoms always exist. So fevers, chills, diarrhea, constipation, fatigue, back pain. Those diseases will always plague us. Mm. Um, the labels will change in terms of de diseases. SARS, COVID, uh, swine flu, avian flu, whatever but the symptoms remain the same. So if mm. you understand the principles, you, can, you know what to do to try and uh, stop it getting it's worse. It's fascinating that a text from you know, well over 1,200 years ago. 1,800. Sorry, well over, yeah, almost two, yeah. 1,800 yeah. years ago is still genius. viable. Oh, genius. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. incredible. And to think that he did all that without any testing or understanding what he was, you know, from our understanding, yeah. but so advanced. So that's what my life, my, my professional life is around just looking at that one book. That's all I've read. That's, that's book. amazing. <laughs> that's, 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 that's serious. So you, you obviously you, you were saying you started out as a social worker and then your decision was after having been, after being treated was this is the line of work that I want to go into. I want to, sure. yeah. so what was it? I mean, what was it like making that move? I mean, what was your first, what was your first, what, what did you do? A, was it a, a course back then? I mean, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, I did a, what's called an accredited course in the right. UK, which is a British acupuncture Kelp course. So it's, it's a three year degree, basically. Right. Um, uh, you, you do Western medicine, you as well as the Chinese philosophy ideas. Um, uh, yeah, it's married together. And then in the final year, it's your clinical year. So you do, you do theory first two years, and in your third year, you spend a whole year in the clinic treating. Wow. Um, and was that is that at the British Acupuncture? Um... Well, the, the, I finished my college. I'm I st finished that. I started at one college and I transferred to another. Mm. Doesn't exist anymore, but it was okay. called the London College of Traditional Acupuncture, and it was in Finchley. Finchley, right? yes, I remember it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Remember. At the time, it, I think it was the biggest Chinese medical school in the country. It was, yeah, it was massive. So I was there, um, and then the other courses were like postgraduate stuff. I did, you know. right. Uh, training and you know and was that quite uh, a big um was that quite a big change or well, i mean going back and studying for three years was it quite difficult or it was it was because it's uh, like most of my students say to me it's quite tough to learn because it pulls you in so many different directions you could have someone that's really good at writing assignments but really bad with a real patient yeah you, know, you can you know i look at them and they're like they, they're like a rabbit in a headlight 
where they've got a real patient. I'm, I'm, I'm watching, I'm going, breathe, breathe. Yeah. <laughs> you're, actually, you're, actually, you're, actually, you're, actually, you're actually a teacher, right, as well? So yeah, 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 I lecture on the subject, yeah. You lecture on the subject, so, yeah. yeah. So you're actually teaching uh, yeah. people that are also trying yeah. to... Um, so, just out of interest, so because uh, I, 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 I'm interested in how you became it and, and how, if anyone is, is actually interested in, yeah. in, in, in going, going on this path and learning more, what, yeah. what they have to go through. So, it's, it's a three-year, is it still the same now? Three-year... I mean, unfortunately, in Britain, acupuncture is not legally regulated. Uh, so, anyone can practice without any qualifications almost. Really? So, yeah, anyone. It's, it's really quite bad. I'm but, getting some needles. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah, I've even heard of online courses you can do, and then you can set right. up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, because I, I, I know that, and I guess there, there, there are these. I've seen courses where like two days learn, learn, learn do acupuncture, and it becomes yeah. part of your number of accredited points, and and then you know after two a weekend or even a week, yeah. you know, people are doing acupuncture on. Yeah, on on people. So obviously you know that's not the preferred method but um if you're looking at doing a full course is it three years and yeah you're... if you're going to do the accredited course of the, the bac is three years and cool. if you're if you're a mature adult you don't need a levels but they just look at you and see whether you've got the ability to learn right wow. um, mm. and it's it's um i think it's about three thousand six hundred hours right course. okay and um, as you were saying that you have to learn western medicine as well yeah you, you have to learn your anatomy you have to learn your uh, pathology and physiology uh, they teach a little bit of pharmacology now it didn't it didn't in my day they do now they do a bit of that they look at red flags so so students know when to refer on if, if they spot something hang on you know this is way beyond the safety of, of what i can treat you know? sure uh, they need to refer, refer to A&E or their GP pretty quickly. So that's the reason why they need to look at that. Um, and then they learn their Chinese physiology, pathology, point location, and then the rest is technical pulse, tongue, uh, palpation skills, um, finding anatomical landmarks. Uh, and then and finally, in your final year, you do your dissertation research and you do your patients. Right. And how... Is, is how just Sorry, is that just for the acupuncture? Or, or? That's just for the acupuncture, yeah. Right. If you want to do herbs, I, as I understand it, all the herb course, you need to be an acupuncture. You should have done the foundation course on Chinese medical theory before you do the herb course. Then when you go on the herb course, you then learn individual flavours, actions of herbs, and then you look at combinations. So it's wow. usually, I think, about two years to do it. It's mm. all together about five years. Wow, that's a... Yeah, so, it's a big chunk. It's a big chunk of money as well. Yeah, yeah. So you really know you want to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just be sure. how how um initially when you're when you're studying, how do you practice the, the needling? I mean, needling. That... well, we we we, uh, we we at my college we we are very practical based. So we're not. I don't think there's some colleges are really really good at doing research and writing papers. Um, we're not one of those colleges. We are more practical based. So we've got heavy emphasis on learning technical skills very, yeah. very early on. So the, the students actually start needing within six weeks of the course, uh, mm -hmm. but under supervision, obviously. Uh, right. So they go, they learn how, what the clean needling process is. So they, we don't have to worry about infection outbreaks. And then they will needle maybe a point below, like stomach 36. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. It's a I've point where they, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a tonification point. You can't do any damage with it, really. You've got to be a really... <laughs> the butcher. Uh, go some, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's a good test of friendship because that's when uh, <laughs> students do each other. Um, okay, so students are, are needling each other. As yeah, a... you know, we wouldn't let them on the public. No way. Uh, yeah. And then, they, then that's how they, they go through that for two years, basically. And then in their third year, then they finally get to do a real patient. But by then, we've kind of led them along the way because they've already taken people's pulses, they've, they've palpated. And also, some of my students are already doctors and nurses right. and physios and um, dentists, things like that. So they don't, the course is short for them because nearly half the course is Western Med. So they do a much shorter course because they've already got it. But they're, they're used to it. But everybody else can be. I mean, I remember when I was needling, I remember 
because I was scared of being needled. Right. And I was scared to needle. I remember the, the guy I got partnered with, poor bloke. Um, and in those days... <laughs> you were like my, this? Yeah. Well, well, yeah, literally, I, I think I tattooed him. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what I spelled, but, uh, <laughs> but in those days, uh, my teacher didn't allow us to use what's called a guide tube, which is a plastic tube that holds a needle yeah. straight. Yes. He, wanted, we, he, he, he had a, a Vietnamese technique, because my first teacher was Vietnamese, and he wanted us to flick the needle in. You had to throw them in. It's a, a crazy just technique. He could do it, but nobody else could. It was just, I don't understand why <laughs> he made us do it, but this poor guy, I butchered his leg. Oh dear. Um, oh dear. So uh, yeah, I think I'll put him off acupuncture for life. <laughs> Um, okay. Just a quick question. Uh, okay. Jin, is there a, a Romanized or Chinese name for the, the text, the Shen Han Lung? Uh, well, the, the six divisions. Right. So in English, the six divisions. Yeah. And but uh, the, the book is actually, it's, it's actually two books. One is called The Six Divisions, and, yeah. there's, and there's another half of the book which not many people know, or right. it's called uh, The Golden Cabinet in English. Oh, interesting. The Golden Cabinet. Yeah. Uh, okay, Sean Compton, I hope that um, helps. The Six Divisions and then the Golden Cabinet. Cool. Okay. Brilliant. So, Thanks. So, Anand, um, yeah. what, so you were talking about some stuff and so what, what do you look at when you're treating a patient? So this is what I'm interested because in, I know one of the things you're saying, you know, you take the pulse and things like that. Whenever I go see Anand, you know, he'll, he'll, I'll give him my hand and then he'll do this. He'll grab, grab, put two fingers and he'll be like this. He's like, Nish, you're very tired, aren't you? I'm like, yes, I am. So what, what, what's, your, what's your method? I mean, and... I um, triangulate. So I, I don't really rely on just one thing in case I get it wrong. Yeah. So I've got backups. So obviously the most important thing is my case history first. So I ask all the questions I need to ask. Right. Then um, I use uh, the pulse and then I use the abdomen because I'm a Japanese practitioner. Right. Uh, so that abdomen as well. And the combination of all those together will make me, will hopefully help me get the diagnosis right of what's going on. Yeah. And, and then how's that, how's that different from, because I remember I was speaking to you about this the other day. Um, like where where I've been treated before, and then they'll look at the tongue, uh, yeah. they'll look at the eyes, and yeah. so is that is that why why are they looking at the tongue? I mean, what what's the difference? The, tongue, the tongue's used in TCM quite heavily. In, in, yeah. in I think in Ayurvedic medicine as well, they use the tongue, but um, they're looking for color of, of the tongue, and and the tongue's divided up in different organs. It's a bit like I suppose reflexology on the foot, I suppose. Right, it's, mm. a, it's a little micro system of itself. So based on where you might have different colors or different thickness of coating or color of coating in a certain area, you'd say, okay, near the tip is, is like the top of the body. So that you look at things like uh, heart conditions, mm. uh, lung conditions. Around the middle, you, you were thinking, that's the digestive system, so it's stomach, uh, lungs, uh, sorry, stomach and spleen. If it's right at the root of the tongue, then you're thinking, okay, large intestine, small intestine, kidneys, bladder, mm. maybe. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's what they're looking for. They look at their tongue. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, so when you're, you were saying you, you look at the pulse, then you look at the abdomen. Yeah. yeah. Um, and when you're looking, at, when you're feeling the pulse, what are you feeling for? What? Are, why? Why are you doing that? The first thing I look for. Well, everything. Of course. Maybe, yeah. Case history and everything yeah, else. Yeah. 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 Um, everything in Chinese medicine doesn't matter what. Uh, what's, what, it, what's, what lineage system you come from, it's about an imbalance of qi. Right. So we're, and there's, there's three possibilities. There's either too much, there's too little, or it's stuck. That, yeah. in essence, is all of Chinese medicine on a really <laughs> basic level. I keep it really simple. From a, I'm thick. From, from a, uh, from, uh, given that you, know, you, you came into this and you were a little bit sceptical and you were like, oh, is this going to work? How how do you define chi, or how is chi defined in in your okay. sense? Right. Um, classically thinking, if you re look at the characters for chi, and I think the number of your 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 uh, other talkers already mentioned this. Uh, by the way, you're smashing interviews. You've got some amazing guys on there. Well done. 
Uh, I learned stuff that I've not, re I've not heard it in any of my teaching or my books, stuff still coming out in Chinese medicine, actually. Um, but if you look at the character Qi, it, it's got two, two, two uh, characters. But one is uncooked rice and one is vapor or steam. Right. So what that means, if you look at the characters for the uncooked rice, that's something that's material. And so in terms of human body, that's going to be blood, that's right. going to be bones, hair, tissue, uh, muscles, body fluids. So it's, it's the material part of the body. And so we call that yin chi. And then you've got the, the vapor side. So that would be some that's immaterial part of the body. So we, that's a bit more kind of complicated to think about. You think people say, oh, what's the immaterial part of the body? So the immaterial part of the body would be body temperature. Right. It would be emotions. It would have, be the energy to move and, and think and do things. Um, it, it's the ability to, to see, hear, taste, touch, basically your senses. So right. that's, that is your yang chi. So quite often I hear, when I hear martial arts talk about building their chi, I always wonder which bit are they talking about? Talking about, But I think a lot of them talk instantly about the yang chi yeah. and mm -hmm. don't think about the yin chi side. So for us, so, so that's what chi is. So we're always looking. So what is the imbalance in chi? So for us, there's like an electrical circuit. That's how I think about it inside the body, which we call, you guys all know, meridians or channels. Right. So that's like a circuit that carries everything around. In, in, in perfect health, they, everything should be balanced. Yin and yang should be balanced. And they're, counter out, they're canceling each other and balancing each other. When that flow is upset, then disease occurs. Now, so when that, when, when that flow is, is imbalanced, that's yeah. why we get sick. Yes, exactly. Right. So, because Chinese medicine is based on Taoism. And Taoism is all about how understanding the universe and how we understand our place in the universe. Mm, yes. yeah. So they got this idea, or the idea that has talked to me was disease is a consequence of us going against Tao, the Tao. That's but deep. They also, yeah. So, but, they, but the other problem is, they say, if you understand the Tao, you don't understand the Tao because the Tao is so hard, you never get it. You'll never understand yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. whenever my students ask me a complicated question, I pretend to think about it, and I say, <laughs> it's like the Tao that cannot be understood. <laughs> <laughs> and they think I'm really deep. Uh, I, can't believe, I can't believe I'm saying this on YouTube. But anyway, uh, we'll delete that. Anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so, th so the whole thing is about the balance of chi. So we would then think, how can we restore that balance of chi with the patient? Um, so uh, we've got like, um, uh, people say, why, why do I fall ill? You know, the imbalance chi. So it could be that you're, the way you live your life, it could be mental, emotional stress. Because in, you know, 3,000 odd years when the Yellow Emperor's Classics was written, which is like our foundation book, yeah. um, it, it's our Bible. Already back then, they identified emotional stress causing diseases, causing physical symptoms. Yeah, right. Whereas in Western meds, that was only around when Freud, I think, was probably the biggest foundation guy looking at... Um, Modern influence. Yeah. yeah. So he'd look at uh, psychosomatic illnesses, etc. But that was a newish idea with, and quite controversial. But not, today, everyone talks about emotional well-being, which is fantastic. Yeah, you know, mental health, mental emotional health. well-being, yeah. Yeah. Everyone talks about mindful breathing. And I think, well done, guys. You're 3,000 years behind the Chinese, but you got there eventually. You're going to claim it for your own and not give any credibility to these family well, well. of the East. Yeah, you know? yeah. But they repackage it. But yeah, so our job would be to, um, to work out the imbalance and how to fix it, but with the patient, you know. Um, so you, I, I, I mean, I, I spent 14 years working in the NHS as an acupuncturist. So I remember one of the things that was quite... Uh, hard for me to get my head around was um, within the NHS there's the patients I, I, I kind of saw who were very ill really ill because we were like the last resort team that nobody else could really do anything with mm. so um, there was an idea amongst patients which I found difficult to understand that they were divorced from their bodies so how they lived their life uh, wasn't connected to why they were sick 
mm, consequences. Yeah. They, they didn't tie the consequences. No, they of, didn't. No. Well, and I would come in and say, okay, uh, what I'd like you to do is move more. What I'd like you to do is cut down on your sugar. What I'd like to do is reduce your alcohol and smoking. But yeah. they would look at me like, why do I got to do that for? That's your job. I can imagine, I can imagine that being true like 15 yeah. plus years ago where now, yeah. Even, I mean, even now, the, the government stance on, on preventative measures yeah. uh, for, you know, for being at risk isn't, it, it's, no. they're not saying diet, exercise, yeah. Yeah. get some sun, you know, the, the things that we all know. Yeah. Simple are, things we can do. Yeah. yeah. So that was quite, yeah, so, so, so in the NHS it was difficult. And, and I'm really like talking to my boss, who's, who was the, one of the doctors there, and I'd say to him, I don't understand what's going on. They, no one's complying anything I ask, and they're wondering what. They, then they're complaining they're still in pain and uh, what's going. And he said, "There's a there's a concept within." He was saying within the NHS when he we were, I was working there, for every ill there's a pill. Yeah, and I was about mm -hmm. to say that they, yeah, what they're expecting is a pill or some yeah. kind of magic thing that's going to magic thing. That I don't need to do that. But, but that, that that doesn't work within Chinese medicine. If somebody's going to continually put themselves in a position where they're going to be sick. We need to identify with them and help them move on. Obviously, it's private medicine. People can ignore your advice, you know, sure. and you, you accept they make informed choices. And sometimes change is quite difficult for some people. So you have to make small steps. But I think a good Chinese practice should empower their patient not to get sick in the first place. So yeah. diet's got to be tailored, activity's got to be tailored, everything's got to be tailored to that individual. So every treatment's got to be individual. The concept of a side effect is not acceptable. And that's interesting, right? Because um, every, every individual is different. So yeah. the treatment, the herbs has to be unique, unique to them, right? Yeah, exactly. I said within, if, if you ask me philosophically, what's the difference between conventional medicine and, what's, and, Western, uh, and Eastern medicine, it's not saying one's better than the other. It's just what's different. But... Yeah. Um, I would say conventional medicine treats human diseases and I'd say Eastern medicine treats humans with disease. Right. So yeah. looking at holistically. Yeah. Because yeah. we're looking at. Exactly. So, so not, side effects are not acceptable within my lineage system I'm from. Right. If someone's have a side effect, they're either taking something too weak, too, too, too uh, strong or no longer need it. Once something's fully mm. once you've treated that root, that it, it's fine, you just stop it, you leave it alone. You create an environment in the body so the body can heal itself. Right. That's, that's how Chinese medicine should work. Right. So w when you say your lineage, I'm just, just out of interest, are there many different lineages of, of, of acupuncture or are there, are there like a few key ones? In acupuncture, I think when I first qualified, I only heard of TCM. <coughs> right. I didn't know anything else. Right. And TCM is a, it's pretty much a communist creation of how acupuncture should be practiced and herbal medicine. And the reason- That's quite interesting. A lot changed with, with, uh, around that period, right? So do you yeah. think- Yeah. Yeah. Everything was being standardized and, and repackaged and they needed something, a system where people could learn very quickly. Right. Uh, and everyone learned exactly the same thing. But from what I understand talking to people, there were different lineages and the lineages de dependent on where you lived. So if you were uh, up north, you would be very good on how to use very hot herbs yeah. and moxa because you know some parts of northern northern china can drop to minus 30 so you're going to yeah. have what we call blood stasis problems and muscle contraction problems so they had a problem where there was they needed to make people much warmer down south they they might have needed they might be better at treating uh, dehydration conditions or what we call damp heat conditions because food would have gone off quickly and it would have food poisoning. So those lineage systems are very good at that because they saw it all the time. It's a simple reason, just the, the environment created that, those mm. lineage systems. And China is so yeah. big, traveling around would have been very minimal, impossible almost. So that's yeah, well, some, of these, some of these other lineages still exist, but the, predominantly the way it's taught, TCM acupuncture is a standardized version. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, from what I understand, um, they wouldn't be allowed to teach. They wouldn't be allowed because literally, you especially I think under Mount Tung, when they had the purges, 
mm. you would have been as anti-Chinese or uh, anti-government or something, which was a very, very dangerous thing to do. And being, yeah. you know, a lot of these guys, I, I spoke to one guy, I think he was a fifth generation between our bone setter, and he's an yeah. orthopedic, he was an orthopedic surgeon. And he said he, he, he burnt his own family books, all that knowledge oh. to show his allegiance to the new order. Because he said no book was worth dying for. And so, you, yeah. can, you can imagine, right, out around that time, yeah. how much knowledge, hey, kung, kung, fu knowledge. kung fu in yeah. traditional, uh, traditional Chinese medicine and yeah. how much knowledge was lost during yeah. that time. Like, uh, well, to be honest, the Shaolin was saved by the Japanese. That's the incredible. Because although it came to Ch Japan a thousand years ago, they kept it, it's revered, it's absolutely revered. Do, they do not deviate from that book in, in, in Kampo. And they had it. And so when China opened up in the 70s, Chinese doctors were going to Japan saying, can we look at the sources? Because it was saved in Japan. It wasn't wow. saved in China. That's, That's amazing. Like, yeah. Very lucky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I, I met one of the doctors who was one of the guys who flew, went over, a Dr. Wang Wang, who is now being commissioned to open the first classical Chinese herbal course in China. You know, because he's so famous and well known, I don't think they would want to uh, yeah. upset him. But he, he's mm. teaching it. Uh, yeah, such a shame, all that lost knowledge. I think there are major mm. gaps. I know. Because uh, uh, you know, I've, I've had acupuncture treatment, which is not standard. Mm. Well, I didn't think it was that. I mean, a massive needle yeah. going through my palm or coming out the other yeah, side. And, yeah, yeah. Massive needles into my foot, yeah. and um, generally just two, you know, two or three needles, not loads and loads. Yeah, it's, yeah, um, yeah. it's very simple methods, but really they quite uh, incredible. Um, yeah, it's almost like instant effect. You can actually yeah. feel something happening. A bit like your, um, I have to say, I've had treatments with uh, Anand before, and the, you, the palpations you do for the abdomen. Yeah test and you find where it's more painful one yeah. two or three and then you do a bit of treatment and and you can it's an instant thing you can feel it something has changed yeah so you know i can very much recommend anand's treatment um yeah so, so what's the um what's the difference between uh let's start with acupuncture what's the difference between japanese acupuncture and Chinese acupuncture. Okay. Theory is exactly the same. Everything, it doesn't matter whether you're doing Korean or Vietnamese or Tibetan or whatever, the theory is always about where is the imbalance achieved and how do I fix it? Right. What differs, I think, if I talk about just Japanese on its own, and then within Japan, there are different lineages again. Sure. Uh, but roughly speaking, what is unique to Japanese acupuncture would be abdominal diagnosis. Right. Uh, so they'd feel around the stomach as a diagnostic tool. The other thing is they use very thin needles and they use very few needles. So one thing that was drilled in me by some of the Japanese teachers that I had was the master uses one needle, the idiot uses a hundred. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you, you use the least amount for the greatest good because every yeah. time you put a needle in someone, you're using their chi up. Interesting. Ah. So that's a Japanese idea. So you want to use right. very few needles because you don't want to make them more sick. Right. So right. it's almost like you imagine you've got a, the way I think of it, you've got this, you've got this circuit and the needles are almost like dials which right. are tuning in. Um, and uh, uh, Stephen Birch, who was one of my teachers, he's a physicist and he's got a theory that acupuncture is effective because it uses static electricity in the human body. So yeah, so talk about Yang Chi, we're talking about statistricity. So when you talk about the needles going in different points, yeah, they're potentially short circuiting to yes, to exactly. take energy exactly. from one area yeah. to another. Yeah. So it's yeah, you're still using up energy to do that as well. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, I mean, there's a book re that came out a few years ago called uh, Spark in the Machine, and it's by Dr. Keo, uh, and he explains it from that idea. And he goes into embryology as well. Um, I've not read the whole book, to be honest, I haven't had time, but I, I think he's, he's, his ideas were based on Birch's books and Birch based his stuff on this guy called Malika, whose lineage system I come from. So, right. um, so they're the two things. One is, in Japanese, would be abdominal diagnosis, and the second one would be 
very superficial or very light needling, so you don't cause any pain. Um, but I think the palpation is a very big part of Japanese acupuncture um, mm. because I think uh, because the blind people were the ones who practiced uh, acupuncture very heavily in Japan. And I think 1700 and something at the first Japanese school, and they're all blind. So obviously they couldn't Incredible. use the tongue. Mm. That was okay. interesting as well. So, because this is because uh, having had treatment for you a number of times, you're the the um, the needle is very non-invasive. Uh, mm. You hardly hardly feel it, and they are. Mm. Have you ever have you ever used one needle to treat? Have you ever got to that point? Uh, where no, I'm not that good. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm still at the idiot end. I'm afraid I can't no, get past. I don't believe I can't you. Get past ten. I don't believe you. Okay. No, no, you, you only use a few needles. It's not, um, yeah. and, and they are extreme. It's just painless, you know. So anybody who's needle shy, yeah. an anti man. Yeah. So what about the difference between Japanese herbs and right. Chinese herbs? Much difference? Yeah. Or? Um, within Kampo, because Kampo is based on just the uh, six, uh, six divisions of the Shanan Lun. Yeah. TCM is based on loads of different theories. It's right. like an amalgamation of a lot of different ideas. Right. So if you look at TCM herbalists, they use their, their pharmacy is much, much bigger than, than a Campo um, pharmacy. And also the Japanese use formulas rather than individual herbs as well. So one of the weaknesses I would say within Campo is if you want to modify a formula, it's much more difficult because a lot of campo practitioners uh, don't look at individual actions they look at formula actions right so if i you know the beauty of that's i think that's why when i did classical chinese herbs it was it, it really did open another world to me of how to just move one herb out of a whole formula could change the entire action mm. so when, when when you're when you're treating do you switch between uh between the two or, or yeah i do yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm always jumping. Um, and also, because uh, of my time in the NHS, I, I kind of was lucky enough to work with some fantastic body workers. So I, I've kind of got a biomechanical approach as well to what I do to understand what's going on. Sure. Because, um, you know, I, I treat a lot of sports injuries, so I need to think in that way too. Right, okay. So how going back to this whole thing how would a therapist treat right. how do therapists treat right yeah. uh, well within within chinese medical thinking we've got you know as i said you've already worked out what the imbalance is you worked out what we call it the ben and biao in chinese the ben means root and biao means branch right so you, you somebody will say look i've got severe headaches then we, we, we might identify okay they've got headaches they say they're irritable and they're constipated so for us, that would be um, an excess patient. If they've got a, a very strong pulse as well, we say, okay, that's, that's a, an excess patient. That person needs emptying and moving. You get somebody else with a headache and they say, I've got diarrhea and I'm, I'm quite, I suffer from panic attacks. And we'd say, okay, that's a deficient patient. So I've got to make that patient warmer and I've got to stop them losing body fluids. So I don't want to, so we would, we'd make that person more robust if that makes sense. Right. So mm -hmm. although the symptoms are the same, the approach would be different because the treatment plan would be different because the diet, the underlying cause is different. So the, the thing about Chinese medicine is it's an entire system on its own. So we've got what we call the five pillars of Chinese medicine. Yeah. So that's acupuncture, herbs, um, tuina, um, diet and exercise. So right. that, that's, the, that's the five pillars. Right. So in conventional medicine, if you have someone with back pain, you might see... Uh, an orthopedic specialist who might ask for scans, look for degeneration in the joint, probably prescribe anti-inflammatories and say, okay, try, go and see a physio for its rehabilitation. If that doesn't work, we might go down the uh, corticosteroid injections. If that doesn't work, we'll go down the road to surgery. Because they're looking at you structurally. You could also be referred to a rheumatologist who would do blood tests and look for uh, autoimmune response in your blood. And they'll say, okay, your body's now attacking itself, so we'll use immunosuppressants to, to dampen your immune system gotcha. or steroids during a flare-up. Or you might think they, those areas might come back with zero. There's nothing there they can really see. It's okay, let's refer you to psychological services. You might have a CBT therapist. 
and they'll say, what was going on? That pain switch in your head and you're switching on, even though there's no external cause of it. <laughs> Within Chinese med, we would have, if you draw, like, you know, Venn diagrams, you've got the circle. Yeah. 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 For us, Chinese medicine is right in the middle. We would see, okay, all three of them is happening at this moment. And that, mm. that circle will be moving into more than one circle than the other. Right. As you get older, as you get weaker, as you get stronger, you know, that, that circle's always moving. So yeah. we could say we, we would put it all together. So within the, the Chinese medical five pillars, that's what you would use. So, and that, that'd be down to what your qualifications are. So I, I don't do tween up, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do body work really. I'm not really a body worker. I would yeah. I use it crudely, but I would never say I'm a real practitioner, but I do. You know, and then sometimes when you're, when you're pressing a point, you're like, Oh, uh, and I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm right with pain. But sometimes when you press a point, you're massaging something. I'm like, uh, about to tap out. So <laughs> yeah. I'll give you guys a special touch. Yeah, yeah. a special touch. Yeah. Now we can take it. Yeah. So but, just um, out of interest, just out of interest, yeah. with, the, with the five pillars, like you said, you've got acupuncture, herbs, tweena, which is the yeah. massage and the meat. Yeah, physical therapy, bone setting. Yeah. And then you've got diet and exercise. Yeah. Like, with regards to diet from a Chinese medicine perspective, yeah. I mean, are they very different in terms of the herbs and, and it, isn't that part and parcel because you're, you're using, you're looking at diet to, to like someone may be eating foods that are too hot or too cold. Yes, too exactly, or too exactly. When you think about it, and, and I think my Japanese herb teacher said this to us, the first pharmacy is the kitchen. If you get things right in the kitchen, you don't fall ill. Yeah, right. as an idea, as an idea, yeah. you know, it, it just doesn't always work be beautifully like that, but that's a possibility. So, if you think most of us eat three times a day, so that's 21 times a week. If you're not eating the right thing, that's 21 times a week, you're actually damaging your body instead yeah. of supporting it. You're making your body work harder than it needs to. So, you're using your chi up, which is not infinite, it's finite. We're mortal beings, we're going to die. So, yeah. the Chinese say you borrow from your future, so your, sh your future gets shorter. So one thing you can do to, for longevity is try and eat the right things. So um, the thing about diet is it's not just what you eat, it's when you eat. So we say that um, your chi, your yang chi for transforming, as we call it, or we call it digesting in Western med or breaking down stuff, sure. is strongest at the beginning of the day, is weakest at the end of the day. So your biggest meals need to be the breakfast and lunch, not the dinner time. But the way we live our life is the other way around. It is, yeah. So is. the first thing is what time of day you eat is really important. With it. Not just what you eat, it's, it's, it's when. The other thing is how much. Yeah. You, should, you should really eat till you're 60% full. Because if you overeat, you're damaging what we call your spleen chi, uh, or we call it uh, in Western medicine, you say your digestive system. And because you're, you're doing that, you're exhausting it. So you, you want to eat a small amount and, and the right time of day. So... I've got patients with, who are you know, quite ill with chronic diseases I treat. Um, I get them eating last night's leftovers for breakfast. And they kind of look at me and go, what? I can't have my cereal or my energy drink. And I'm thinking, no, no. It's, it, you know, Kellogg's cereals was, is a relative new American concept in the- You might, as well, be, you might as well eat cardboard. The nutrition yeah. value is- Yeah, the nutrition cardboard. value is terrible. So, I mean, I, I'm- I'm half Vietnamese, so for me, for breakfast, my wife still finds it odd because she's English, but I, I had, I'll have noodles with pak choy or uh, mushrooms, yeah. or tofu, squeeze They're it always on, good. Flakes. Right. And my wife said to me, who the bloody hell eats this? <laughs> I said, well, I do. <laughs> yeah, come to my part of the world. That's what we eat. Most you know? of China. Yeah, you know, exactly. Most, most of China. Southeast Asia. That's how we guys eat. Yeah. Um, so... I, I say to patients, so a big meal it should be then. Um, and particularly at winter time, it's even more important because you're trying to protect your yang chi. So right. um, if, I work, if I'm looking at my elderly patients that I worry about, particularly if, if, with this pandemic, uh, respiratory to these diseases, I don't, I don't wait till they get sick. I want to stop them getting sick in the first place. Preventative measures, right? Yeah. So I get them all drinking, um, well, in, in Harrow is a very large Asian population. So I get, I said, drink chai, chai tea, first thing in the morning. Right. It's got cinnamon ginger in it. So and Indian, Indian tea, masala chai. Yeah, chai. yeah. 
the only thing I have to watch with those guys is the amount sugar. of condensed milk. Sugar. Yeah, and sugar. Milk about and four sugar. or five sugars. Yeah. So they've all got type 2 diabetes and don't know how it happened. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I didn't know that, that they all make, and they use condensed milk for some reason as well, because it's even sweeter. I think yeah. what it is, they were saying in, in, in Asia and in Africa, where they were from, milk goes off quite quickly. So the tin milk lasts longer. Yeah. Mm. Um, so they've grown up with this very sweet soup. So um, there's me saying, look, you can have it, but please keep your sugar to one sugar max. But the reason I'm doing it, because it's, it's a yang tonic first thing in the morning. I want them mm. to... Interesting. Interesting. I want why, them to try why, and protect their yang chi. Why, why, um, so just have interest, why, why the Indian spicy tea? What's, what's in there? That's... Well, there's two things. The rest of it I don't care about. It's just flavouring. But mm. it's got cinnamon and it's got ginger in it. Right. So cinnamon is, is considered like by the lineage I'm from, the emperor herb. It's the most important herb of all the herbs. Really? You know, different dosages. We use it for severe pain. For breaking down blood stasis to blood clots or we use it for just maintenance you know depending mm. on how you use it so uh, it's, it's a great it's a great one for increasing blood circulation of blood you know yeah. so it's similar to the muscle relaxant um but it's, it's a yang tonic basically from a chinese point of view the, yeah. the there's the ginger that's in it is, is powdered ginger powdered ginger because it's powdered it's, it's warmer it's hotter and therefore tonifies the transformation process of breaking foods down. We mm. say it on a vice spleen yang in, in Chinese med, but in, in Western we'd say it's di help aiding the digestion. So these guys don't probably break down what they need from their foods. So it's, it's, it wants to break down the food, the other one to get to circulating. So it's a good way to start the day. So I said, drink that. And then if I'm working with people that don't drink chai, I just get them to have like powdered, um, just grate some fresh ginger into some boiling water, a bit of honey and maybe lime juice, they don't mind. If they've got a lot of phlegm, I add, I add, I add uh, lime juice to it. Uh, and I say, let it steep and drink it while you're in the office. Yeah. So it's a tonic, mm. basically. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm going off the subject a bit, but so, so we're talking about food, we're talking about what, you, what time you eat and how much you eat. So it's really important. Mm. Not overeating is really important as well as actually what time. So big meal, beginning of the day. But, it's difficult to do with the way people live, you know, people yeah. work start early and work incredibly long hours, uh, people are stressed, so it's not unusual mm -hmm. some of my patients say, I don't have breakfast because I just feel too ill in the morning to eat, and I just have an energy drink, and then I just work right through. An energy and, drink, yeah. yeah to keep well, know, a lot of people do that, they start yeah. the day off with a Red Bull or whatever. I think it's yeah. becoming more, more widely known or accepted that uh, nutrition and mm -hmm. Rather than the word diet, because you know the word diet kind of yeah has a connotation has a connotation of yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do a four week diet or a thing. So if we just say the word nutrition. What we what with uh, it's becoming well, especially if you train. If you train, if you if you if you push weight or if you do martial arts or yeah. anything like that, uh, one thing that's always drummed in is uh, you can do all this work, but if your if your diet or your nutrition is crap you're wasting your time you know 90 percent yeah, of the work yeah, is done yeah. like you said in the kitchen yeah. right so yeah yeah so you use the five pillars as yeah. that's your diagnostic yeah work that's, that's the system it's not, it's not a diagnosis it's a treatment system they're yeah. the treatments so i don't oh, use right. all five because i don't i'm not a tina practitioner yeah I, yeah i i do acupuncture i'm more of a herbalist than acupuncture to be honest right I use so you, so your diagnosis would lead you into one of these branches yeah. It right. leads me to all of them actually, and I say, "How do I?" Because every little bit I can do to help you get better, I'm going to tell you how to do it. So mm. diet is one thing, and then I would give them a tailor-made diet program on what I think they might need to stick to right. uh, that might help them. And then the other one is, is, is exercise. But the important thing in Chinese med, exercise is also mental, not just physical. So at the mm. moment, everyone talks about mindful breathing. Again, that's nothing new. You know, you guys do a lot of qigong. Yeah. That, that's, you know, people assume that I had to do something physical because uh, is, when we say, if you look at, um, when I'm treating people with insomnia, one of the reasons being is we say the night time's a yin time, but the yang side is still too active because they're in their heads, they're overstimulated. So mm -hmm. I, want the, I want the yang to descend. So I'll give them exercises to breathe and guide their yang back down. 
I wouldn't say that to them because I think I'm bonkers, but mm -hmm. I would uh, think I'm a witch. So I just say, you know, so I just, because we say where the mind go, chi goes. If chi go, blood goes. Yeah. Because the blood, yeah. blood leads the chi. Right. Yeah. Well, chi leads the blood, sorry. So I'll get them to root their yang so they can sleep. So as well as the herb, as well as the acupuncture, I'll give them the exercise to do. That's the exercise I'll give those guys. Yeah. If, if, they're, yeah. if they're strong enough, if they like I've got some people with ME, chronic fatigue, or cancer patients, they're really exhausted. I say, just lie on your back and do the breathing. If they're strong enough, then I get them doing standing postures for 10 wow. minutes yeah. and try and hold so them. That cycle you talked about, the, the mind intent, the yi, yeah. is what yeah. leads the um, chi. Yeah. Chi leads the blood. Yes. Blood leads the muscles. Yep, yep. And tendons and sinews. Yep. yep. And then the bones. Yep. And God. then it forms a cycle because the blood, yep. uh, bones create the, bones the new blood. blood. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's quite interesting because it's the same concept within the uh, traditional art, the internal side yeah. of it. It's all in there. It's all, mm -hmm. it's all based on, on Taoism. Right. So Taoism is it, it's applied to cooking, it's applied to uh, martial arts, it's applied to yeah. art. It's in art. You know, Life. The classic the paintings, yeah. So, it's the Tao, it, isn't it? It's like, and which form of cinnamon were you, were you talking about? It's just standard cinnamon yeah, powder? Yes, yeah, that's fine. Don't, get, don't buy anything really complicated or expensive. It's ordinary powdered cinnamon. Yeah. Don't do the cinnamon yeah. challenge either. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 I buy the cinnamon um, uh, tablets and I have those in the morning. With, uh, uh -huh. Oh, wow. So... Just a, yeah, it's just a, you can get them from any like Holland and Barrett's or any any oh, good. Mate, I didn't know that actually. Yeah, yeah, you can get you can get cinnamon in a form of a tablet. Um, so you can get most things in a form of a tablet. I mean, you know, yeah, probably. sunlight in the form of a tablet, pretty much, can't you? Right. So, mm. um, looking at um, treatment overall, man, yeah. when you when you're feeling the heart the heartbeat, are you are you also feeling like how strong someone's blood flow is by the pulse or is it just generally yeah. if you're tired or yeah. if i there's there's 28 qualities that out there that are being used today in chinese yeah. in ccm particularly um I, I i'm looking for three basic things i look at the depth first of all yeah so when i moment i touch my touch lightly is it is it is what we call a floating or superficial pulse or do i have to press to find it near the bone right, right. And so the depth will tell me where the disease level is at. Is it on the surface or is it deep interior? Or is it in the middle? And sure. is it yin organ, is it yang organ? Or is it inner channel? Uh, then I would, look at, uh, I would look at how strong it is. So when I press, does it, does it disappear straight away? So there's, there's no chi there then. Or is it really pounding back at me? So is there a blockage somewhere I need to be worried about? Um, then I last thing I look at would be speed. So depth, strength, speed. If it's really fast, I'm thinking, okay, is this person really stressed and adrenaline is pumping through their body and they're stuck in flight or fight? Right. Or um, is it because their body's uh, immune system's gone overdrive because they're fighting a disease off of some sort? So sometimes I've taken someone's pulse and I'm thinking, have you got a cold start? Have you got a cold or something? They go, no, no, I'm fine. And then in days they're like, oh my God, I had a mother of all colds. I'm, knocked out <laughs> and it's like ah okay so I, I i found something before it happened you know um, yeah. it's a one of those fluky moments i wish it happens all the time um and then 12 like, pulses is yeah, it 12 so you've depth, pulses you've got depth uh strength and then you've got so you've got superficial middle and deep then you've mm -hmm. got is it fast or slow or moderate which is the healthy speed is it really too strong or is it really weak or is it a healthy one? Yeah. So um, and then each position is, developed, is divided up into different organs. Yeah. And, and, and also different parts of the body. They, they, they call them um, mm, jowls. So the upper jowl, middle jowl, lower jowl. So upper jowl will be from the diaphragm to, to, to the top of the head from a channel point mm. of view, but from an uh, organ point would be heart and lungs. Uh, middle jab will be uh, liver, stomach, spleen. Uh, lower jab will be kidneys, small intestine, large intestine. Right. So we look at those different levels. So yeah. Mm. Interesting. They tie in with the uh, what they call the jowls, the um, the 
uh, Dantian, yeah. or, or the Dantians, you know, the right, yeah. lower Dantian, middle and yeah. the, the yeah. upper as well. Yeah. Correlation there. So, so you get a lot from the pulse, and then yeah, I, I I use it. Some people don't use it at all. You know, some lineages don't use it. So I do know some people that will uh, just take everything from a case history, uh, and that's it. And they'll prescribe because that's how they've been trained. They they, they listen out for key words that a person might say, and that immediately tells them what they need to do. Right. Uh, some people might use the tongue very heavily. Some might use the palpation of channels on the body. But again, that's not what I do. I don't know how to use that system, but I, I've got colleagues who use that system. But for me, I, I, I'm lost without the pulse. So, uh, not for acupuncture, but for herbs. Yeah, for herbs, yeah. For herbs, I use my, yeah, I need my, I really need to take that pulse. I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't know what to do without it, really. Right. So let's, I'm just, I'm going from my own experience of being treated with you. So sure. you, you take case history, you ask certain questions, you're looking for keywords. You're yeah. looking overall at the person and, and the physical physical aspects. You take the pulse and then yeah. you'll say, hey, uh, can, you, can you get on top of the, the, the treatment uh, table? Yeah. And then you start to then look at the abdomen, right? Yeah. And you're pressing certain points of the abdomen. Is this yeah. more painful than this? Is this what's most painful? So what's going on there? Why, why the abdomen? I, I use the abdomen two, two, two ways. So one abdomen I take would be for herbs. Right. And the other picture would be for um, uh, acupuncture of, of the malignant system. So when I'm looking for tightness or pain, it tells me which channels aren't working correctly at that moment in time. Yeah. Because if you came in a different time of day, the pain would have moved because chi moves. Right. So it will move, if the pain would be somewhere else. But at that moment in time, that's where I find it. Right. And then, like, like you guys know, so the moment you say, you know, you've got pain in, say, your subcostal area, I would, I would needle on the affected side and then I'll come back into the subcostal pain and I'll say, does it still hurt? If it still hurts, that means I put the needles in the wrong place. So I need to move my needles and adjust mm. it. That's my feedback tool that I use. Yeah. Rather, than, rather than saying to a patient, come back in a week's time to make you feel, mm. I know already by the time they left my bed that change is occurring. Yeah. yeah. I'll vouch for that. That makes sense. So yeah. that's what I do. Yeah. So from my experience, uh, listeners, so when I've, when I've, I've had this experience with Alan a number of times, so he'll, he'll press a point on my abdomen and I'll be like, oh, that's quite sharp. That's quite sharp, mate. Mm -hmm. And then he'll do something and then he'll needle somewhere <laughs> near my feet or something. And then he'll come back and press it. And I'll be like, oh, it's gone. It's completely gone. I'm like, why is that? And so why, why does that happen? Why has that pain suddenly gone? What does that mean at that moment? That means at that moment in time, that, that bit of the circuit's fixed. Right. So that's what that means, right? Yeah. So have you caused, have you stopped some sort of unblockage or have you just allowed the... Yeah. Uh, well, we would say, I think my Japanese would say to me, you have regulated qi. Mm. You haven't cre increased the amount or decreased, you just regulate. You make sure the right amount is in the right place at that uh, moment in time. Right. Okay. And then from a herbal point of view, I'm thinking, okay, is it a deficient problem? Is it an excess problem? Um, and then I, then I start thinking about what formulas I need to start using based on what you told me as well. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're different pictures though. Right. Um, Does that mean I try to use diet sometime more than I do herbs, to be honest. I'm still a big fan of trying to be the least invasive. So even herbs, I think very thoughtfully whether I'm going to really use them or not. And I try and use if I can use natural diet, but compliance is not always easy uh, with patients. And sometimes uh, their condition is too serious. I can't really use just diet on its own. It's amazing that, uh, well, it's not amazing, but sometimes even the way you say it, you say a, per, a, a patient's or a person's lifestyle and what they eat, when they eat, how they eat yeah. can, can actually be, can actually cause that root problem to, yeah. To get better over time or as opposed to, because at the end of the day, you, you want your patients to be, to be fine and to be healthy always, not yeah. coming back for the same issue no, over awesome. and over again. You know? no. um, I want to empower my patients to do things for themselves, to look after yeah. themselves, hopefully educate them so they don't create the environment that it's allow this thing to occur in the first place. Because otherwise you're just, you're just continue. it's like a, uh, you're just continuing to stop a leak, right? You just keep fixing it with 
Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's one of the things I think when I spoke to my, one of my teachers, he said to me, um, is, imagine you've got a bucket with holes in it. There's no point in putting more watering all the time. Block the holes. Right. So yeah. if we look at how we treat, um, and I get this a lot with my students sometimes say to me, um, what points do you use for infertility? And I say to them, the first question you need to ask is why are they infertile? Yeah. If you know what they're infertile, they know, then you know what you need to fix. So mm -hmm. don't come up to me and ask me those questions because it's the nonsense <laughs> questions. You know, you've been here a couple of years now, I'm not talking to you. you know, <laughs> go back, go back to first year. <laughs> yeah, go back. I would, I was, if I was allowed, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really getting grumpy at my old age. <laughs> They must hate me, but, yeah. you know, but I want them to learn their foundation. Foundation's everything, you know. Forget, yeah. for, oh, forget all the clever stuff, you know. That's right. Get a solid foundation. Look at how you can yeah. help your patient easily. Fundamental. No, don't try to be too smart. Yeah, yeah. You've come back to something that most every every person we've spoken to has said. Your foundation are, 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 is key, whether it's yes. yeah, whether it's kung fu or whether it, well. Yeah. You know, even it, Kung Fu is, is just describe everything, right? Even what you yeah. do with Kung Fu, you've got good Kung Fu. You've got great herb, herbal, 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 herbals and, and uh, acupuncture. So, yeah, foundation is, is important. Um, so, yeah. Dan, a question for you, right? So, a patient comes in and they've got shoulder pain. Yeah. Uh, and it, it could be from training, throwing a punch or, you know, uh, whatever it is. So is your process still the same in terms of treatment? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, the only time, because what we do is we, I make a diagnosis, but I also make a prognosis. Right. So the prognosis is what kind of speed can that person regenerate? So they're not ill anymore. Yeah. Or, so you can tell that's from, from, the initial kind of consultation yeah right? yeah generally speaking the younger somebody is if they don't have if their energy is good the body temperature is good uh they don't have any uh mental problems and those of depression because like, that's quite that's the mental disease are considered the deepest disease in the body so moments on, i hear the word depression i see amyltriptyline in their prescription i think hmm okay mm. i've got a fight in my hands uh, if, they, if i haven't got any that, and it's an acute injury that's never happened before. So I'll repeat one again and again. I know generally, I'm, I might only see that person two times. They're, they're fine. You know? But if I get somebody with a shoulder pain and they said, oh, I've had it for like 20 years. I also, I'm also a type 2 diabetic. I'm obese. I'm a heavy smoker, heavy drinker. I never move. Don't think, then no, I'll, I, their prognosis is going to be far different. So but generally speaking, if you're talking to me about athletes, um, they're generally going to respond quite well. The prognosis is going to be good for them. But however, I will still go through stuff just in case if it's a repeat one. But I think you bring me on to one of the questions I've not because I, I know that certain, in my experience, certain sports, certain activities has certain RSIs with it. Um, so I know from, in my, again, in my experience, some of these guys have a lot of like shoulder and elbow problems. From yeah, you've, treated, you've treated a fair few, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, I know that a lot of the judo guys I treat got a lot of finger problems, you know, from yeah. I'm assuming from gripping or something they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. A lot of the BJJ guys have like whiplash injuries on the necks. So I don't know what the hell they're all doing running around their heads so much, but they've got issues there. So each sport or something has something specific to, to them where they're overusing a certain part of their body. Because particularly in, in martial arts, we, we're trying to be superhumans. We're trying to make our body do something it's not really designed to do. Mm. So um, I, 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 there's some practitioners, I, I, uh, some of the instructors I, I treat, they treat, they not so much in traditional martial arts, they might be um, uh, more in the modern martial art camp, I'd call them. So they don't have a, an idea of dip or how they, some of them say to me, I said, well, how do you usually manage these injuries? So well, you just man up, uh, you stick an ice pack on it, and, you know, within our thinking, within traditional martial arts, that's the last thing you do, but that's what they think. But I'm kind of wondering, what's going to happen in your 40s and 50s and 60s? Because you're going to pay for these injuries, you know. Um, you, you can get away with some of that stuff up until, if you're lucky, near your 40s. But by the time you're 40, you're top of the mountain, and the only way to the top is going to be going down. Yeah. So how fast your descent is, 
depends on how you're going to look after yourself. Like you said, you're, you're coming free fall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you they, said, they're borrowing, borrowing from, their from their future. Exactly. Yeah, you know. I mean, how many times have we seen martial artists that drop dead quite early with heart attacks? Because I'm wondering, is that a DVT there? Is, we call it, you know, blood stays in Chinese meadows being dislodged somewhere and it's gone and travelled and or whatever. Ah, uh, that's um, interesting. Is, is, is uh, some, of, some of that wear and tear on those joints from hyperextension uh, or that heavy banging and crashing without conditioning safely. But, but that's gonna, I'm going to ask you that, guy, that question because you know, between the two of you, you must have like 40 years or more experience on, on how to mm. train. I think Nish was training intelligently. How do you do that as a practitioner, do you think? You know, um, how you take this one? <laughs> well, just very uh, in the very beginning, none of us know, do we? We, we? we start a new martial art, none of us know. We just go along with what the teacher is saying. Yeah. So primarily find yourself a, a good, a reputable teacher that knows the system and whether it's a traditional one or whatever you do. And I know some systems, like you mentioned earlier, will just generalize kickboxing. And they don't use jowls and they don't use heating methods and they try to man up through it. And it, and it, as you said, it will cause injuries in later life. You can, you can man up and get through yeah. things, but you can get injuries that you forget about. You don't even notice. They just become part of the norm, but they will play up later in life. Um, so for us, it, it's good to have that, that solid foundation of training of, of a sensible, a warm up before you train it doesn't have to be really over the top you can actually it can be functional it can be the training that you're doing you just do it gently to begin with to warm up so um you do that you've got to train smart not push yourself beyond your limits and you know again for us in the traditional arts is overcoming ego if your if your ego won't let you yield to someone that's stronger than you, you're going to end up with injuries. You're going to end up damaged. You know, then you've got to use uh, uh, jowls and stuff to heal the injuries or get that knowledge from someone like yourself, someone from a traditional viewpoint that you know, Stephen Paul, who know about the martial arts and know about the kinds of injuries that happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you're going to get those. The best a lot of them. Uh, well, that's the thing, right? A, a, a lot of these these teachers of uh, traditional martial arts not only do they know the the fighting aspect they know the healing aspect as well so yeah and some of the sifus you've spoken to yeah um, they they all, all, they've all learned herbs they've learned massage twina they know acupuncture uh, and they've learned the traditional system of and even within the system there are formulas as you said you know like yeah uh, massage uh, alcohol, alcohol massages you know with, with herbs and stuff and oils Gals. and uh, medicines that you take internal like, uh, pills internal yeah. pills that are used to uh, displace um, as you said you know uh, stasis blood and help, yeah. help blood flow and help chi and you know uh, things packs to draw out bruising draw out so th there's all these things that you learn so when when I say train intelligently I mean for me it's like as you said, you know, as you, as you, as you get older, injuries take a lot longer to heal. And the longer you have, if you're injured, it's an out, you, you know, as, as well, you know, you get a shoulder injury, you can't train like you normally do. You could be out, uh, you know, so it, it's not just about, it's listening to your body. It's, <laughs> it's, it, and it's, it's, as you said, you know, diet, it's understanding your body. It's, it's warming up. It's warming down. It's, uh, it's learning how to, uh, you know, a lot of my stuff as well is, is, um, is, you know, self-treatment through certain aspects of whether it's, uh, whether it's all of the, um, uh, Hei Gong exercises, uh, yeah. yoga, or using some of the, the traditional methods of massage and feeling and, and, and getting things out, taking, taking those jowls and, and taking, like I said, when I come to see you, having that, option of uh of uh of those pillars of chinese medicine as i see which are really important mm -hmm. to keep me uh balanced but also keep me training and keep me going such as acupuncture as you know when i've seen you recently and said and you've given me herbs you know th this is this is so important um and, and that's a that's a rich part about traditional uh traditional martial arts is that piece which is as you said how many thousands of years does it go back where they're talking about 
mindful meditation. Yeah, um, 3, 000, at least 3,000. Yeah, yeah. Intent, intent of energy, intent of mind. Um, breathing into ab- abdominal breathing. What you eat, what herbs you take uh, for underlying causes. So injuries through the traditional methods of healing, you know, they're so important. And, and, and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a vital aspect of being able to, and you know, as I see it, being able to continue training and to improve um and 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 overall yeah. let's be healthy you know you know mind body spirit those those three Train things into old age you know you don't there's yeah. you know with the traditional arts you should be able to even as you get older you can do maintenance training you just keep it going the guys that are doing stuff that um are like a traditional base training like heavy conditioning you know when you're clashing bones or whatever that comes from a traditional um, historical lineage yeah. of training that had all the healing stuff. So if you're doing that heavy conditioning and not he and not healing it, then there's something missing there that could play up later. Um, so you do need the the medicines as part of that process because the body is not designed to, as, no. especially as you get older, to continually smash and get bruising and have to repair. Um, it's overworking. So you need that. Yeah, um, medicines you actually heal it. Do you see the cheek build oh. part of the healing process? As definitely, well? definitely, Absolutely. definitely. Absolutely. Huge, Absolutely. huge part. Absolutely. Um, for me personally, so I've is actually, that in the forms then? Or there are certain qi gong forms in the form itself, right? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's is some that why the forms are always done at the end of the class. Um, they don't have to be. They oh, don't have right. to. Be. It depends what have, you're doing. Depends on how. how yeah, how the the see if he's wanting to structure the class, but generally, you're going. There's warm ups. People do stuff, and they do all the heavy active yeah. stuff, and they um, and, and, and they do warm downs then. Do yeah, and then do yeah. and then do warms. But the warm the the forms are not just to warm down. You have to put effort into the forms. Yeah, yeah. To push yeah. and to develop. Uh, yeah. But you can do some that you know light breathing uh, stuff. If you if you're doing the qigong the heigong in the forms and you start to have an understanding and start to have a feeling because it's not just visualization you have to feel it it has to manifest so and that's it, it that's, that's an important point yeah because yeah. you're you scanning to, as well a lot of it is self-scanning like you said exactly I can, I can train i can do i can do a form i can i can run some you know tai chi type movements and yeah. mm. even when i finish and i'm warming down we're doing you know our meditation breathing and whatever yeah you're scanning and I can be like, Oh, you know what? That didn't feel right. Or that was all the time. Yeah. yeah. Or this is like that. And so that gives me, that it, it, it's me finding out, okay, okay. I need to, this is something I need to focus on. I need to, you know, yeah. call Anand and say, Anand, you know what? I've got a little bit of pain in my shoulder and you know, so it's, it's, it's helping me to find these little niggling things mm-hmm. where I can either try and treat it myself mm-hmm. through, through methods that I've learned, or I need yeah. to go see Sifu Paul or see you know you you and and when it's yeah. beyond my Precisely. my own my own capabilities of of I might need something more in terms of you know herbs or I need someone to needle or yeah, so, yeah. totally yeah and I, that's, that's one thing that's really useful about when I work with with with, with athletes I'll, I'll put you I'll class you guys as athletes you know <laughs> too kind with, I think <laughs> I work with, uh, with athletes is that you know how to listen to your body. You know a good pain from a bad pain. Yeah, I've had some mm. guys who don't train. That's quite well, weird I, as well. Yeah. And I've had well, some, and I'll say, you didn't know this is fractured. You know, yeah. they just train yeah. right through a break or a fracture. No. Almost a part. I mean, I had a problem with an Achilles tear, which is incredible, and he still was running. I think what? Was, How the hell? That is so it's pain. It's like yeah, it's like, oh, it's like gl- I've had. Like I've he, he just thought, head. oh, you just a man up and get through it, and he used ex-army, and you know. Yeah. And, mm. But he didn't know that a good. And I thought you don't, you didn't, you weren't aware. No, it's crazy. It just, I mean, cause yeah. it. How often, how often we've we've trained, and uh, you know, I'm speaking to uh, Nish on the phone. I've said, yeah, after oh, so I'm busted after that training, but in a good way. Yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? you're aching, but uh, um, and it, it's you know, it's painful. What have you done? Yeah. Feels good because you know that's yeah. that's development. Yeah. When it's, you know, and it's not, a, it's not an accurate science, but when, when things aren't right, you kind of know it. No, as well. you kind of know. You yeah. kind of yeah. know. Yeah. You'd be surprised. So, you know, you can use, know. you can use your own little oh. things. You can use your jowl. You can use a bit of yeah. self-massage or glass hair. 
uh, mm. or or the Hegel and try to just sit and meditate. And you know, they say if you build your chi, it naturally goes to heal. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. If you can do it with a guided meditation, and yeah. you know, I'm not saying that I'm really good at that, but I do try. And I don't know it. You know, sometimes you get a, a knotted back. Or, you know, your yeah. back's all knotted up from from whatever you've done. You can sit there and you can feel it pop if you just yeah. guide do that guided meditation. You should, That's brilliant. You should go, yeah, you know, and I, I have that. Sometimes I'll have, a, a, you know, yeah. you, you do kind of, you can, you manipulate and you stretch and feel, and then I can be like, oh, there it goes, and you know, and yeah. and it's also like I was saying, you know, a, a, a good sifu is gonna make that kind of healing a part of your your thing, you know, like we we've seen, mm. before, you know, when when I've had an injury, he'll be like, okay, Nish, you know what, you apply the gel, you massage down away from the heart, yeah. and you massage in this function. And yeah. you do it this way, and yeah. like, oh, and you know, it's for me to say, well, see, well, why, why, why do I massage that way? Why am I massaging away from the heart? Why do I have to do this? And then you continue learning that. So part of the the training of development of the understanding of the healing side, is of understanding things. the healing side, and 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 how to massage and why you massage in a certain way. Mm. Um, and you know, some you might not realizing it, but you're learning in that method as well. Yeah. So that's how totally. I bulk of my stuff has come just from you know being shown something or being oh, okay, do this and do that so um, i think even some like there might be you'll have a, for me a good see if someone who actually knows all that stuff but even if they don't they know about it if they haven't learned that healing something they know about it and they can yeah. advise you to go and see someone or go and get that tree they'll be able to kind of help you with the the basic stuff but yeah. it's the you know the onward guidance yeah. as well so, and I think it's so important. So even like within our lineage, you know, we have so many formulas and so many different, uh, uh, like you were saying, right? There's, there's jowls, there's, um, uh, there's herbs, there's medicines that are taken internally. Um, uh, the, the moxa. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's very important. And, and even some of the, uh, even though we say kickboxing, when I look at the, uh, look at tie boxing they actually have this as well so right. tie boxing do yeah okay. tie it's boxing like, is a traditional art traditional it's a traditional you know? art, but you know they have they, they, they have, have balms, very massages massages balms fundamental and when you're, you've trained over there they're very like they get a bruise they 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 treat it, like, it. They yeah. really get those injuries right. and things very yeah the traditional the traditional guys they do they train hard but yeah they, do. they, they oh, have yeah. that they have that background of 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 the traditional methods of healing, right? Which is, mm -hmm. I think, how come it's lost with the guys over here? Though? I don't know many. Yeah, but then I I, I I I don't know. Maybe maybe you know, like some parts are going to come uh, are going right. to come over, yeah. and you're Training just focused on the healing. Bit. Yeah, you're going to be maybe you're just focused on the punching and the kicking and the elbowing. You're just focused yeah. on that external get things done. Shin, but shin yeah, even it. look at look at some of the even if you even look at India as well, right? If we take the example, like look at uh, the traditional Indian wrestling, right? Um, or even calorie, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Medicine is a huge part of it. Even with Christy, they have the traditional wrestler's massage, but yeah. diet, um, yeah. uh, medicine, like in the form of uh, oils. So yeah. it, it's mm -hmm. a big part of it. So in the traditional side, you, you've got to love that piece. You've got to love that yeah. piece. It's, it's, mm. it, that it's not lost. And um, it's something that has to be kept up, which is, you know, it's fantastic that some of the many Sifus we've spoken to, not only are they learned, not only are they doing this, this fighting aspect and the traditional um, mm. martial art, but they also do the healing and the uh, and that side as well. And, and I think that's mm. really, really important. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see if there's any questions. Uh, let me ask. And while we're while we're doing that, um, and I'm interested, what are some of the um, most common injuries? that you see from martial arts it depends what martial art they're doing okay that's actually, that's interesting all right let's yeah. go uh, some, some martial arts i just i okay i'm going to need evidence it's just my own clinical opinions but yeah. like i said like mantis guys i see shoulders and elbows very common right. you don't lies fingers and fingers are a bugger to treat um Mostly, I'm, I'm surprised with Jude. I, I would have thought you would have seen more with, especially with the with the throws and the things. I would have thought you would have seen more with shoulders and maybe. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they, I, they know how to fall. They, so. they rip their finger pads off some of these guys, you know, and they. Yeah. Uh, oh. Always take they, They're always. That's it, grabbing hold of the gi. Always isn't it? breaking fingers. Um, yeah. So they got a lot of 
small and hand injuries as well. Sure. Which surprised me because they don't strike, so I don't know how they do it, what they're doing, but anyway. It's the gate, it's always throwing and knocking and okay. grabbing of the thing. Uh, and the BJJ guys, I'm, 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 I'm exaggerating a bit, I'll just give it a rough idea, but BJJ mm. guys often a lot of neck problems from, I think, rolling. On Interesting, the yeah. Or yeah. And, and knee problems as well. BJJ guys, a lot of knee issues actually. Okay. Um, but yeah, sorry. So yeah, if I said which, it depends what they do. So they're, they're the kind of, comp then you've got the trauma based injuries. Um, and then a lot of that, that's really more herbs than acupuncture, to be honest. Yeah, I think yeah. acupuncture is fantastic for external problems, as we call it. If someone had a muscle colleague problem, uh, problem uh, acupuncture far superior to herbs for that, for a channel problem. So it's sure. an instant release, combining with moxoids, or even combining with electro acupuncture, then you know, I, I get a very, very fast result in, in terms of that. Um, if they're, if they're very deficient, then I might need to get them on, on tonic formulas so they can build them up so they can carry on training. Then I might talk to, might talk to them about um, if you're tired, then maybe do a softer training session. You know, don't have to smash every session. You know, <laughs> try and train maybe more techniques on, while you're, when you're in the zone. You know, I'm talking older people, you know, make the most of it. You don't know how long you're going to be there. But on the days when you're not able, it's okay to step off the pedal with it. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. longevity in what you're doing. Yeah. Maybe trying mm -hmm. to do a bit more soft, but it's, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think the injuries, I, I, I referred it to Stephen Paul actually. I, I've never met Stephen Paul, but I heard so much, but because it's way beyond my skill set. But I, I had a young, young boy, basically. I, I don't think he was even 20, but he, I think he might have had two fractured hands from punching trees to condition oh. his hands. He, he was a Kyokushin knockdown guy mm. and he was going for the competition and he couldn't close his hands his hands were shaking i just took one look and i said have you had them x-rayed because i'm not touching this guy this you know i might get the blame for this and i wasn't sure if they're infected and he said oh no i've been punching trees and i said well who told you to do this he goes oh masayama used to do this yeah he saw that in a film probably yeah yeah probably yeah. and because he did he did, but i referred him to seafood paul because i didn't want to touch it i thought i, I don't know anything about dip that it's not part of my training so yeah mm. I, I suspect they were, they were fractured as well so at least seafood paul would, would have seen some of this he would know about people mm. that have yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't know if he went or not but you know yeah but yeah you know a and e like this so there's are there things that come up for you that you just think whoa uh, you need to go to A and E. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had an um, uh, MMA fighter came saw me was about fifteen years ago, I think, and he just couldn't move his neck. He was in a fight the night before, and apparently, someone picked him up and and Fight him. him on his head. Oh, yeah. 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 But the amazing thing was, even though that happened, he won the fight because he kicked the guy in the face from the floor and knocked him out. <laughs> So I think the adrenaline just got him <coughs> excited and he was running around because he won his fight. Yeah. Um, but he couldn't move his neck and the bulge in his neck was pretty serious. And I, I said, oh my God, and he, he was a bus driver as well. He drove a bus the whole day. Uh, and I, I didn't want to touch his neck and I said, I, I want an x-ray because you just told me how it happened. There's, there's red flags here because he had tingling in his fingers. Uh, he had like flashing lights in one of his eyes, and I thought, uh, uh, you know, it's a no brainer, really, is it? Yeah. You know, I remember he, he final, was, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he was furious with me. He was really angry because I didn't treat, I didn't charge him, obviously. And, yeah. and he said, I've waited all day, and you're not going to do anything. I said, because I, 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 I can't x ray you with my fingers. I wanted to go and get yeah. checked. Anyway, I never saw him again, and then he phoned me a couple of weeks later, and apparently, he fractured the cervical vertebrae. Yeah, it's you know, crazy. He, he could have been killed. Yeah. He could have died in that fight. Yeah. Uh, and driving around all day, you know, without going and yeah, you know, you know there's something wrong. People he could have killed on the bus. Uh, and yeah. I said to him, what did your, your, your uh, master, uh, his coach, say? and his coach said, oh, it's just put a wet, uh, that wet sponge on, you'd be fine. And yeah. <laughs> that was a sole <laughs> medical <laughs> advice. Just man up. Yeah, I mean, got, people do that. They, he's he's kind of modern. Mm. They use modern modern stuff. Like a lot of people kind of you know use ice to, to yeah. kind of um, yeah. You know, I can see how that's useful. It's, yeah. You know, the whole rice thing, rest, ice, compression, yeah. elevation from yeah. ankle. 
Yeah. Is that is that, is that still vi- is that viable though, Alan? The rice. First there? twenty-four hours. I mean, I know, this is this yeah. only my own view, and I know some Chinese practitioners would be really angry with me saying this, but my own clinical view of of, of of treating these things is, in the first twenty-four hours, ice is fine to take the swelling down. Yeah. And, yeah. and encourage deep circulation. After that, you're going to do more damage with it, and there yeah. you need to use either hot and cold or just hot. Because what's happened is already contracted, ice will make it contract further. Mm. In short term, it might anesthetize the area, but long term, you're causing G stasis. And if G yeah. stasis, uh, uh, they say blood congeals. And if blood congeals, then there's pain. Yeah. So you've got, you've got to unpackage all that. And, it's, and that is then heating. So either using moxa, infrared, uh, direct needling into the area, or hot herbs yeah. and blood yeah. movement. There's, there's and massage of certain areas yes, you know, yes. as well as another yes. thing because I think some of these in the, the blood can it can actually sit there for years yeah and the chi doesn't flow so it's kind of like a dead spot and so it never yeah. really heals you've always got that oh it really hurts there and it's always yeah. there you the <laughs> many a time in. where, where yeah. I, I've had an injury or I had an injury and like, so like fingers or things and the blood out oh, just massage that out for you mate and then <laughs> you'll be like oh, did, did, did. <laughs> yeah, like, try, try and make the scream. It's just yeah, like you know, oh, it's, just grit, mate. Grit your teeth. <laughs> it is sometimes more painful than when you got the injury. Yeah, it is. It's necessary, it's necessary to get it out. You know, yeah. I've done so many people. You know, just minus. I stuff. think you popped one yeah. of my bruises out once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my you know, god. I it's it it's kind of the tradition, you know, you see it really huge yeah. and it's just a build up of um, blood and it will yeah. sit there. So if you're quick and you get there and you can flatten it, yes. and spread it, disperse it, and more blood can get to it and heal it. it. You know, yeah, the, 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 exactly. But it, it's not pleasant. No, it's, it's horrible. <laughs> you just want to cry. Yeah, but Actually, this is why it's, I think it, for long term it's so important to, to um, address these things. Yeah, especially as you get well. older. Yeah, because if you think about even from Western point of view, you know, in terms of strokes, uh, yeah. the, 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 the blood cell wall becomes more viscous and, and they become sticky and they form clots and then they lodge yeah. into joints and things. So you've got to look at your foods, which thin blood like garlic, the oily fish. Yeah, yeah. Old, particularly oily you, fish. all you athletes out there uh, and, and okay. stopping the smoking and watching the sugar yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and alcohol. So, uh, you know, so... There's things you can do basically with your own diet. Moderation, moderation. Exactly. You know? Enjoy it. Forever. Uh, and I know I had another um, thing I remember. So I remember you saying that you like to to look at herbs first because, as you were saying, that when you needle, it it takes a lot of energy from um, from the person as well, right? So yeah. Using um, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I mean. Uh, have you ever, uh, I mean, have, do you, have you ever had someone that said, I definitely want acupuncture? And you'd be like, no, I, acupuncture is the last thing you should back. I, I would need them very, very superficially. And I always back up my treatments with moxa. If they're really deficient, right. I use moxa. Mm. Uh, to back as in that moxa is in? The herb, burn. Yeah. Burning. As you know, I use infrared because I've got smoke alarms in the rooms yeah. that will go off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You use them. Yeah. Um, because I, I remember asking this question with regards to um, uh, needling, and then you you put the infrared on, and then the yeah. heat kind of goes through yeah. to. The, um... Yeah. Yeah. What was that technique you used on me? Uh, you know, I went for a phase. Where I was, I had you know things in life, stress at work. It was just absolutely horrendous. My neck and shoulders are solid for for a long so, time. Yeah. yeah and I you used that. a technique on me where you um, the, you got a, a tiny bit of. Um, Moxa burnt it and dropped it on my thingy. Scarring technique, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's rice grain moxa, it's called. So we, we would get, uh, set, we call it semi pure moxa or pure moxa, and yeah. we, we would roll it into a size smaller than a grain of rice. Yeah. You put it on it and you'd light it and it burns out. It's like a pinch. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's used to disperse chronic. Really, pain. really did help yeah, yeah. It really kind of not very I think it shocks the muscle into yeah, into yeah. going oh what was that and letting go brings chi there straight away that's right. amazing yeah yeah uh, but it's not a lot, a, lot, a lot of people don't like it hurts it, <laughs> yeah, it, does. No, it doesn't it hurt majorly but it, yeah. it leaves a little scar doesn't it, yeah, it just it burns you and, yeah. um, 
but yeah, it's, it's, it's it's the game. No, that was good. I, was it interesting? Again, these some of these techniques are quite unusual, and people yeah. you know haven't really heard of them. Yeah. That was quite uh, yeah. Just out of interest, um, um, what? Because uh, I've seen a number of different things with um, with needling. Sometimes needling and then moxa over the needle. Yeah, mm. is that more about the heat? rather than yeah. yeah what you want is you want the needle to conduct the heat to the site of where the injury is or where the deficiency is so if you think a muscle contraction we would say that's yin because uh, and there's no stasis there because if there's if there's yang chi there there's life and movement and heat if if, if it's contracted and it's poor circulate but you've got mainly yin and the way you contract you deal with yin is by adding yang and that's heat so right. that's where the moxa comes in. And so, is the herbs, do the herbs kind of have an effect as well? In, in terms of what, moving blood of, of, Yeah, I mean, whatever the injury is, you've put a bit of moxa on a needle, it, the, does the herbal smoke actually have an effect on I don't think so. Area? I personally Anywhere. don't think so. Uh, mm -hmm. I know some people say they think it does, but I, I, I don't. No, no, there's something where you can get sprays, they say moxa ointment, and then and they use a hairdryer to heat it with. I'm yeah. I'm a bit skeptical about that personally. I mean, you were skeptical, like you know, twenty odd years ago. So true, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I keep an open mind, you know. I, I keep yeah, I'm always yeah. humble. I, I, could, I could be wrong. I, I, I haven't got the brains to understand it yet. Do you? I've never actually asked you this. Uh, do you? Do you? Um, do you do any cupping, or have you ever learned any cupping? Or I, yeah, I, I don't cup much, to be honest. Hmm. Um, we've got very very strict rules on how we cup now in the uk really and the conditions that we have to meet up. yeah the condition we meet is so onerous that it does it's not viable for me to do it right. so i don't bother mm -hmm. um yeah. and is also cupping, even, sometimes cupping, people get angry about the bruising yeah is well. your cupping, the uh -huh. cupping with um with the uh with fire the, cupping yeah I, I don't fire cup unless i'm teaching then i teach fire cup. I, I used to use the vacuum cup the reason you use the vacuum cup is yeah. I, I can control precisely the force I want. Right. Yeah. Because if someone's got a really deep, weak pulse, I don't want to use a lot of force. Right. So right. I, want a, I want a gentler force because they can take it. You guys, I don't worry about because you're strong as oxes. So mm. uh, I can bang you with six inch nails. It wouldn't make much difference. <laughs> but, you know, but generally speaking, the, the other people I, I deal with who are, might be quite exhausted, run down, I, I can't use their tape because I'd make them worse. Yeah. Mm. When, I when, mean, I've seen it used as diagnostically yeah. as well. Like, you know, the um, you have the cupping and the colour is, is yeah. black, black when you're really ill, when there's a deep injury or yeah. like a, if someone's got a real bad shoulder strain or whatever. An old injury, it goes yeah. black. There, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I've got no clinical experience, but I spoke to somebody many years ago who was a, a specialist with, with treating um, class A drug addiction. And he right. used cupping quite a lot. And he said, if you looked, if you cupped around the, uh, what we call on the back meridian point, the bladder channel, and he yeah. said, if you look at like, he would like cup around uh, the heart points for cocaine, because cocaine affects the heart more than else. And then right. he would say, I would maybe, uh, and you, could, you said you could see that, the, that those areas were black, the, the blood mm. stagnation, that area. Uh, yeah. And then other other drugs would affect other organs, so he'd focus on cupping on those organs to try and help them, help them detox. Wow! Yeah. Nice. Uh, but again, that's only what he told me. I, I don't treat drug addiction because mm. the success rate is zero, so I tell him not to bother coming. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I've had cupping before. I've had wet cupping as well, which yeah, is not, yeah. it's not legal in this country I, now. I, is I, it? Isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's it isn't within the BAC membership. It might be outside because there's other bodies at my but right. my body has really high hygiene standards and right. some bits i think sometimes bit over the wet top. cupping for those that don't know it's just um these little you know finger prick yeah so it's make oh, it's a, um some little holes in your back and they put the cupping on that and it draws blood out and yeah. it's surprising how much blood it actually draws out yeah, yeah. the color of the blood then has and the viscosity yeah. has an indication as to your well-being and you know the people analyze it that way when would you I, I, when would you I'll prescribe a, when would you prescribe uh, uh cupping and when would you use it i mean when would i use cupping yeah. i don't use cupping anymore but i think historically me my own self 
I think I use it on like a lot of uh, muscle skeletal conditions, to be honest, mm. old stubborn muscle skeletal conditions. It's yeah. like a really powerful deep tissue massage without yeah. having to push very hard to get elbows in people. Mm. That might hurt them even more. Sure. Um, so I think it's really, so I've used it like whiplash injuries from car accidents. That's what I'm interested in, uh, yeah. I, re I release it very quickly yeah. uh, with cupping in, in those areas. And I work along the subscapular muscles, et cetera, with shock waves or whiplash travels. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think releasing the areas around the site of injury as well yes, exactly. allows the site of injury to release, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, so you follow, you know, around the area, not just the injured area. Yeah, right. Okay, so um, we don't have any questions on on the group. Anything okay. else you wanna you wanna share, Anand? Overall, um, I thought that might be useful some books if people are sure. interested in looking at how to look after themselves. That would be great. The diet, and I thought. One of the one of the, a good book I give to my patients or I ask them to read. One of the uh, it's called Davrick Leggett, and it's spelled D A V E R I C K, and his surname is L E G G E T T, and the book he's got is it's only a very thin like almost like a uh, it's a, a giant paperback basically, and he, he breaks it down into Yin foods, Yang foods, blood deficient, etc. Uh, blood stasis foods oh, and, and, it's, and, it's, and it's western diet because some of the books a lot of the books old books i've got they're all based on chinese diets and either we don't know how to cook these things or we can't find them um so uh this this one has it and it's all he's, he's kind of worked it out it's called a guide to traditional chinese food energetics okay and that's that's a good <laughs> book actually if people want to look at for themselves um and the other one, if you're really interested, and it's a, it's a big book though, it's more of a reference book, but it's quite good. It's, it's written by Paul Pitchford, and, it, and that's called Healing with Whole Foods. That sounds great. Great. So that would be something that patient. Well, uh, what was that first one? Uh, it's Davrick Leggett, Helping Ourselves, A Guide to Traditional Chinese Food Energetics. Helping Ourselves. I'm just put, writing these down for people because I think it would... Um... That those that are interested it's it's very there. easy you can look at it for yourself and you can work out which one you think i might be um mm -hmm. so you can look at how you can actually look after yourself really and i have interest the original um uh text the shang hang on is that yeah. are you able to get that from amazon and stuff is that is that available to yeah buy? yeah i mean i wouldn't bother buying it okay personally unless you're a practice because it's not just even in china you would read it with a real master that will guide you through the book. Right. Because it doesn't right. make a lot of sense, to be honest. So you need the commentaries. Gotcha. So, so those people that are actually training in the field. Leader. Yeah. yeah even so, they, okay. even I, I, I say even I, I'm, I'm not that, that big deal, but when I'm, I have to sit with people who have, who's, I can't read Mandarin. And even the Mandarin it's written in is written from thousands of years ago. So right. no one living today would know what it meant. Because the characters yeah. changed, changed. Yeah. So even they would need help. So um, I wouldn't bother with buying that book personally. Mm -hmm. oh, I thought there was a, a translated version. Or, or it is translated, but it wouldn't make much sense to you. Got you. Without the commentaries, it makes absolutely you know, I mean, even then, they, they say that if you're going to go hunting in the woods, take a good guide. Yeah. That's a Chinese saying. And that, that, that book is one of them. Because I read something, what is he talking about? You know, it's absolute gibberish. <laughs> oh, really? There's a, whole, there's a whole section on <laughs> gibberish until unless it's expanded. Well, then, yeah, it's got the key to unlock it. It's suddenly mm. ah. But I've mm. been looking at it for twenty years, and I've only just kind of understood it about five years ago. But didn't didn't a lot of this get unlocked when it came over to Japan? So don't they have their um? They, they have, but it's not as fine as as when I did my classical herbal medicine, Chinese herbal medicine. Right. Okay. When I studied with those guys. Then the the bits really made sense. You know, it suddenly was it's sort of like they say there's there's more than one right answer. But there, there's lots of uh, right answers in Chinese medicine. Mm. But what it is, you're in the right ballpark, but it's the one who hits the bullseye you want to be. Not the one who yeah. is going to get there eventually in three months' time. You want the one that's going to get you better within hours. I have, yeah. I have another question just just before we finish off, Anand. Uh, with with uh, TCM and herbs, either uh, Campo or, or TCM, are all herbs um, 
vegetarian or are, are there no any... they're not they're not actually but in the uk um we're not allowed to use any non-plant-based uh stuff sorry about the dog uh, so uh but historically in traditional asian medicine you can have minerals so we might use like oyster shell we might use um gelatin so gotcha. if i like it, some of the formulas i might use for someone that's miscarrying it contains, it contains gelatin. It's a jow. A jow is a uh, donkey hide. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we'd use that to stop them bleeding and stop miscarrying. Um, right. If somebody had, I've had someone with lots of like bone problems as well. Again, I'm thinking of using a jow, but we're not allowed to use it in this country, so I can't access it. But you can use it in America. You can use it in Japan, uh, Australia, Canada. It's, it's legal, it's perfectly safe, but just under British law, we're not allowed to use it. Mm, right. so, but if you have concerns, I've got vegan patients, I would, you know, if I was using those formulas, I would, I would say, look, you know, it contains blah, 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 are you okay with it? And if they say yes or no, then I have to think of how can I alternate with other herbs that might, it might not, it won't be as good, but it, you know, it's in roughly the right, right area. Mm, but okay. yeah, they do have them. Yeah, so, There's a lot more restriction on, on herbs in the UK and globally as well, isn't there? Yeah. On traditional Chinese. Um... Yeah, but it's very tight in the UK, it's very tight. So my, my colleagues in Switzerland, Norway, they have everything. My, my, my colleagues in the States, I, I just look at them, I just wish I could use these formulas. I've got some really sick people, but just not allowed to use any of them. Oh, but minerals are used, minerals are allowed. Even things as think... basic as you know, gelatin you get in a jelly, I'm not allowed to use it, but you can eat it in a sweet, but I can't prescribe it. Because yeah, I could, you know, I could, it's, it's a criminal offence for me. <coughs> I yeah, I think it. it's strange that you know, again, Western medicine, you know, for for me, like acute stuff, Western medicine is oh, is phenomenal, it saves lives. Yeah, um, chronic stuff, long term stuff, lifestyle stuff, the the Eastern stuff for me is the uh, is yeah. the way to go. Yeah, sure. um, but you know, it seems like there's money in pills and if you're constantly not cured but just keep being fed pills it's um there's big money in it and i think that's why there's a um a way a, a kind of a a, a a thought of cut stamping down on the traditional stuff because yeah. it's there's a lot of people you know, to go and i think some of it's still very very valid relevant and effective yeah you know yeah. Final, final question before we wrap up, just out of interest. Um, I know that you're saying that every individual is different and herbs and treatment should be done according to that person, but are there general um, herbs or supplements that anyone can take that would be good for them? So it would... Cinnamon ginger. Yep. Yeah, everyone, cinnamon ginger. And also, I think also other things really important, I think we have uh, is sleep. You know, if you think about it, really based on a basic level, you know, uh, you can live, I think, it, it, yeah, you could, you could survive, a, you know, a month without food. You could survive, I think, maybe five days without water. Within 72 hours, your brain shuts down with sleep, without sleep. You're going around. And then you start hallucinating and all Yeah, yeah, it's you true. Know? So when you think most of us are running in deficit, I don't know how many of us have really good eight hours sleep a night. I think very rare. Yeah. So we're always borrowing and we know with sleep deprivation, chances of, of you know your immune system being compromised, you've got things, all those sorts of things. Thought processes. Yeah, thought processes, dementia, balance. Alzheimer's. We now yeah. know sleep deprivation. Yeah. So, uh, so, so all, all the listeners, you know, training is very important, but so is rest. Yeah. Rest and balance, balance, balance them all out. The, the, the three things, diet, exercise, and, and rest. Yeah. So keep sugar to a minimum as well. Yeah. Keep mm. sugar to an absolute minimum. That's the other thing. Well, sugar and yeah. salt is in everything these days. Yeah. Isn't it? Just literally yeah. Sugar's the one that's the big one. Yeah, sugar's yeah. a big one, though. That's my, I, sugar's my enemy. Yeah. <laughs> all of us it's hard it's really hard yeah you don't like it's your best yeah. brilliant and brilliant. Uh, that was great man okay. thank you very You're much welcome. i hope that really, was really really interesting um how can how can people yeah. get a hold of you or, or uh, come and see yeah, you put my web my web page out there uh, and they can they can contact me through my web page and i'll see if i can help them
I'll share that. Yeah. I'll share that on the group. So that's acupunctureharrow.co.uk. Yeah. 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 I don't even know my own bloody web page. Yeah. 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 Yeah.